What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a massive gent tone using the Line 6 HX Stomp. This unit is an absolute powerhouse when used correctly and I've been really enjoying using it as the brains of my work in progress pedal board. The tone I'll be showing you today is the tone that I used in one of my latest videos, where I had my Squire Jazzmaster Baritone tuned all the way down to double drop G. Check it out via the card up here. But first I'll showcase some chugs with every single guitar I have. <laughs> Now before this starts, I use third-party impulse responses from ML Sound Lab in place of the stock cabinets. These can be loaded onto the unit via HX Edit, and then you just use the impulse loader block instead of the cabinet. Big thanks to the guys at ML Sound Lab for sending me their mega gent cabinet pack to check out. I would highly recommend using third-party responses as they're a big level up on the stock IRs. Note that I am plugging into a Horizon Devices Nano Attack before the HX Stomp. I won't use this for the main tone as I didn't have it when making the double drop videos. I may toggle it at the end of the video though. Now while you can edit your patches on the unit itself, I will be using HX Edit to showcase this tone. This is not just because I use the IR loader section, but because it's a stupidly easy way to make patches. Seriously, use the crap out of it. Less time tweaking equals more time playing. So let's jump right in. First things first, you're going to want to alter some things in the input section. Firstly, turn this gate on and then reduce the decay time. This saves you having to use up a block for it as you can only use 6 blocks on the HX Stomp. Secondly, altering the impedance here based on the guitar you're using can alter the tonality of the guitar, so play around with this. This alters the load on your guitar pickups which is sent from the unit to the guitar. Basically, the higher the impedance, the more responsive, brighter and tighter your tone will get. I generally set this to 1M, the highest it goes. So in our fourth block space we're going to use an amp block and then set it to the Rev Gen Red channel. Then in our fifth slot we'll load the impulse response block and set it to one of the Mega Gen IRs. Adding IRs to the HX Stomp is super simple. While using HX Edit, navigate to the Impulses tab and then drag and drop any WAV file IRs into any slot you wish to use here. These can now be selected on the unit itself as well so you don't actually need to load up HX Edit just to change an IR later on, which is a big bonus. Now I have no specific way of setting this amp up, and it's prone to change with each guitar I use. But generally I'll alter the presence and then up the drive a little bit. I'll then adjust some of the tube emulation parameters such as bias. Bias basically changes the feel of the amp by emulating cold tubes versus warm tubes and what that does to your tone. Cold is brighter sounding, and warm is, well, warmer sounding. I make my tones colder by lowering the bias value. Sag is another really interesting one to play around with, which really simply explained emulates power sag or a small lack of power from the amp's power supply, changing its response. All of these controls give you detailed control over how much tube style compression the amp generates. If you don't understand this, don't worry at all. Just experiment with them until you get a feel for what they do. Here's a quick example of what bias does. <laughs> Once you get to something close to what you want, it's time to add a boost to the amp, specifically a Tube Screamer. Though other drive models will colour the tone in different ways, so just pick whichever one you like. Set the Screamer to full level, 80% tone, and then starting with the drive at zero, increase it until it sounds good, but not over distorted. As mentioned in my Guitar Rig 5 tutorial, I also like to find balance between drive from the amp and drive from the Screamer. It's like mixing different colours, you've just got to find the right shade for you. So starting with the gain at zero...
And speaking of those colour shades, this is prime time to now scroll through the Mega Gen IRs to find something that really caters to your style. Depending on what guitar you're using or what genre you're playing, you can pick different mic types and brightness levels, or even get ones that are pre-mixed together from ML SoundLab themselves. Of course there are other ML packs, or of course other companies that produce great IRs as well, but of course ML's Mega Gen is going to work well with the music that I play. I'll now cycle through some of the Mega Gen IRs. on that one. This is the way that I create 90% of my tones regardless of what amp sim or modeler I'm using. I generally don't post EQ on the unit itself as I'll do it with my Softube console one instead, but the graphic EQ on the HX does come in handy here. However, if there are specific resonant frequencies that are negatively affecting your tone, I'd suggest using a parametric EQ instead to pinpoint the bad frequency. You can do this by selecting a high or narrow Q setting, boosting the frequency band, sweeping the frequency knob to find the bad frequency, and then cutting it. But don't then cut the frequency out entirely, as this makes the tone sound unnatural pretty quickly. Just dial it back a wee bit. Now this is where things get fun, and a tad stupid. Go to the first block and add a pitch wham effect. This is how I got my Jazz Master all the way down to double drop G. The guitar is in drop E, but with the low string dropped a further two semitones to D. But by altering the pitch shifter to be negative seven semitones, you can get some hella low tunings. Of course, this affects the timbre of the guitar the more you drop it, so I like to apply an EQ after this to regain some of the high frequencies lost in the shift. Use whatever EQ gives you the best results for your guitar. The Tilt EQ is actually a really cool EQ to use here, and it's so simple to use, so try that if you don't need drastic results. This is now what it sounds like before and after the pitch pedal. Now from here you can make little alterations based on what you're wanting from the tone. Have no need for pitch shifting or pre-EQ? Now you can post EQ and apply delay and reverb for sweet leads. Want to use the stock cabs? Well, you can instead use an amp plus cabinet block which frees up another space. Even though this is a small unit with some limitations when compared to the full Helix units, it's definitely capable of some awesome tones. You've just got to be smart about how you load everything on the unit. Don't have any blocks left for post EQing? Well, did you know that there's actually a global EQ hidden away on this unit? In HX Edit, just go to Window, Global EQ, boom, there you go. Just note that this covers all patches, so remember to reset this if you change patches. This would be fine in a studio or recording setting, but maybe not so much for live use, but you get the idea. So that's all for this video, I hope you got something out of this. If you've got any more tutorials you wish for me to do or anything else you want me to try out with the HX Stomp, let me know in the comments section below. I've been seriously enjoying video editing at the moment, so give me a reason to edit. Thanks for watching, Timmy out. All right, here's a bonus for you. Here's with the nano attack disengaged. Engaged. Disengaged.